Hello, mis amigos, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having an amazing day. And today, I've abandoned the Monstera that you guys hated on and said it was dying just because I neglected it for like a week or two. It's fine. I repotted it. It'll be fine. Repotted it. Please don't come for the other plants now. <laughs> this one is new, and this one is new as well. It's not even mine, but it's amazing. So today, even without the Monstera and even without being in the kitchen for a change, we're gonna eat <laughs> and I'm gonna talk. And by we, I actually only mean me, but you can eat too. I mean, Naomi's eating too, so. <laughs> I just decided, you know what, maybe I should order some food and talk to you guys as though we were having dinner or lunch. It's lunch for me, it might be lunch for you as well. Just like chit-chatting, kit-catting, fit-fatting, you know? So that's why I got myself a nice little bowl. We've got some quinoa, some olives, some feta, some black beans. Uh, carrots! <laughs> <laughs> Tomatoes. It's actually not that big, but I think I will be fine. You also have a burrito. Yeah, the burrito was meant to be for tonight. <laughs> I was just being smart. And guys, very exciting. We got to stay healthy. So I also got myself a juice. It's carrot and apple and ginger and mint. So it better be good. Mine's avocado. The bougie one. Is it good? Ooh, I like the noise. Let's do that again. Ooh, I like the noise. Let's do that again. Cool. Mmm, that smells like... That tastes like health. It's actually really good. It look like blueberries. My olives? What do blueberries look like in your eyes? Like that! <laughs> I guess it's about to get juicy in here. We all know that two weeks ago I did a Q&A, as my friend liked to call it Q and gay because I basically told you guys for the first time that I am a gay and I also asked you guys in the end if you guys want oh my god can I say guys more often gay. <laughs> 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 I also asked you gays if you wanted me to talk about my coming out let me take a bite first <laughs> oops did you spit in your food Disgusting. no in your mouth oh like that <laughs> mm. smoothie what oh. does it taste like melon hey Oh. It doesn't! Mm. I see what you mean. Oh. Alright, now that we're no longer hungry, I'm actually starving still. I can finally get to the point of this video. I did not want to make the biggest topic out of this because I don't think it should be and I don't think it is. So that's why I also ordered food for this video so that I could call this video something along the lines of ordering food and telling you guys about my coming out. <laughs> I guess I should eat some of my ordered food. So I decided to do it after all because I realized or I actually had already realized before I even said that I might do this kind of a video. I think these kind of videos can really help people. Firstly, understanding the process and then secondly, just, you know, hearing someone going through something similar it always helps, I think. At least that was the case for me. But I just thought if I were to just help one person with this kind of a video, then that's great enough for me. And I definitely think, I think a lot apparently, <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought, oh my god, <laughs> that I'm finally at the point where I can speak comfortably and casually about this topic. That being said, we should probably finally get to the point. So to be honest, I don't even have a plan for this video. I don't know where to start and where to end. So I guess I'm just gonna start talking and see where we end up. <laughs> I guess I should start with my first coming out, which I think the first coming out of every queer person is coming out to yourself, realizing and then also accepting that you're queer. Sometimes that can be the hardest part because this can also take the longest, which was the case for me. Well, I guess it did not take the longest. I guess I came out to other people after I had come out to myself. <laughs> I mean, I think I realized that I was queer as a teen already. <laughs> I don't, I, I can't remember a real sexual awakening or something like that though, but it was sometime then, but I did not really do anything about it. So I neither dated girls nor did I date any boys because I just did not want to accept it. I did not want anyone else to think that I was gay, even though many people thought and also 
and also came at me for that, bullied me in a way. But because of that, I sort of hid that part or I learned to hide that part. I guess except it really was in my late, late teens, maybe even my early 20s when I was like, okay, fuck it. You can't really change anything about it. Maybe you got to start accepting it and just being okay with it. And I still didn't really do anything about it. Like, I did not tell anyone. I did not meet anyone romantically. I mean, we could go even further, but I don't think I really want to go there of queer teens being kind of robbed of their typical teen experience that you see everywhere and that you hear about everywhere from other people and stuff. But generally speaking, I think that's a fact though. I don't know, I need a break. <laughs> This is kind of much. I was just starting to accept it myself and so I did not think to even say it out loud ever. So then when I was 21, I moved out from home to Hanover with Naomi, obviously. 21? No, we moved when I was 20. I feel like you only get to really be yourself when you're on your own and really learn more about yourself when you're on your own and that's what I did. Yeah, I still kept that part hidden for two more years though. <laughs> I like to think I did not read too much into it, but I think I had some flirty eye contact with a guy from uni. When I first got started at uni, then we had a course together as well. Yeah, we never talked though. I don't know, maybe it was just me. <laughs> Let's fast forward to the first time I ever came out to another person. I did it over text. So the first person I told it to was one of my best friends that you guys don't know. We've been friends for over 10 years now and she basically knows everything about me. Up until, I don't know, I think May. Oh. As if I don't know the exact date. Well, it was in May 2019. <laughs> Coincidentally, right when I started YouTube, by the way, that's when I told her I really wanted her to be online when I would tell her and stuff. I kind of scheduled it on that day. I was like just talking to her about some random stuff and she was like, you wanted to tell me something. I then just told her I'm gay. I couldn't even say it in German. There was just something about German being too close to me that I just could not write like the words ich bin schwul just schwul <laughs> why did I pronounce it like that and I think it's because schwul has been used in Germany and I think it still is as a very like bad word as in if something bad happens people would say that is gay so das ist schwul basically it just meant like schwul means bad the connotation of that word just really rubbed me the wrong way and was just bad I guess and it's just easier to say something in a different language I think especially talking about feelings there are probably a lot of studies out there and I'm rambling now. I told her in English, which wasn't even weird because I sometimes do text in English just because I think we're all raised by the internet culture. She was really nice about it. She congratulated me and it was just the sweetest thing ever and I was just really happy and very relieved to have told her. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now looking back, but even in that moment I knew that she wasn't gonna react differently, but there's always the fear of them reacting differently. Deep down inside, you know that person and you know who you can trust, I think. I also didn't hear something like, I've already known and I've always known and that kind of stuff, which I think is really damaging. Damaging because I think it just gives that person the feeling that all that hiding, all that pain has been for nothing. I think, you know, if someone comes out to you, just be careful with those words. Also because I think these words are deeply tied to stereotypes that we have of female and male behavior and anything that is not stereotypically male would then be gay. That's just a side note and I feel like I'm talking a lot about side notes instead of actually getting to the point. Then I still did not tell anyone for a couple of months and then in August I finally came out to Naomi. She was the second person I came out to. It was different with her, that's why I didn't come out to her as the first person I guess because she was just closer to me. She lived with me and it was just easier for me to do it via text first because well, firstly, I just don't talk much. <laughs> With Naomi, I never flat out told her. I remember we posted a photo. It was this picture, I'm just gonna show you. I just remember reading a lot of these comments like, is he your boyfriend? Is he gay? Are you together? Other people saying, no, he's gay. How do you know? Oh, he definitely is, I just know. Yada, yada, yada. No one ever said anything. Before that, I had only come out to one person, so there's 
you don't know. Sorry, I'm a bit aggravated when it comes to that topic because just yesterday I read the comments under one of Naomi's videos from, I don't know, half a year ago or so. And people under that video said the typical stuff, you know, like obviously, is he your boyfriend? Is he gay? Yada yada. And then just people like, <laughs> people really were out there saying, no, he's gay. He said that already when I was making sure that I or no one else would ever say these words in a video or make it seem like I said it. So for that person to be like, he said it in a video and Naomi also said it in a video, that was just like really hard to read because who are you? <laughs> who are you to tell other people that I was gay and that I've said it when I never did? <laughs> and there was this whole argument because there were people defending me saying something like, oh, is it really true? I don't just want to assume things. They were really going off about it. Like, no, he said it, blah, blah. And that was just really weird. I remember reading these comments under the photo that Naomi posted and then we watched a movie together and we kind of both looked through the comments at the same time and there were just a considerate amount of these comments. It was just this really weird moment because we both read those comments and I knew that she also read these comments, like obviously because there were so many and even before that, but she never talked to me about it, which I appreciate obviously. But in that moment, it just felt so so weird not to even comment on it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I said, so I guess I should comment on this comment, you know? <laughs> I don't even think I ever really said it. I must have said something like it's true or so, but I never said that I'm gay. She just kind of hugged me and finally, and we both cried a little and it was just relief and nice. Yeah, I wasn't happy about the comments still, <laughs> but they helped me in that moment. To other friends, I never came out in a typical way or typical. I never searched for a conversation, starting it with like there's something I need to tell you. After I've told Naomi I kind of started my hunt for men and so I had a couple of crushes and I maybe talked to a guy or two and that's basically how I told other friends because I told them like you know I'm talking to this one person and then I told them more about that person and obviously at some point they realize that it's a man's so that's how I came out and it was never really a big topic maybe here and there I might have dropped a you know he's a man by the way so I'm gay so that was all in 2019 so to my closest friends I came out in 2019 except for one close friend actually but now comes the tricky part my family <laughs> that took yet another year and a half got two sisters and a brother I came out to my sisters in Ah, that's a bit of a longer story. So I visited one of my sisters in September of 2020 and I really wanted to tell her then but I was like you know I'm visiting her I'm sleeping there for a couple of days I don't know if I should tell her because what if she reacts in a way that I don't think she will re react but maybe she will and then what do I do I don't want her to have to kick me out and feel weird about kicking me out I was searching for a moment to still tell her even though it did not quite feel right so for example for some reason I've got Naomi saved in my phone under tolle Frau which means great woman <laughs> and then then I get a message from Naomi saved under tolle Frau while I was at my sister's and my sister is a nosy bitch <laughs> and she likes reading other people's messages. She was like, who is tolle Frau? <laughs> that was a really great chance for me and I hesitated a little because I was like, that is Naomi and I easily could have said if that person would be who you think it is, then it would be tolle Mann, as in like, great man and not tolle Frau. Uh, I hated myself so much afterwards. I think this kind of hatred is very typical, but like, don't hate yourself too much. You will find your moment. And in December, I was just like, Christmas is weird already. Let me just tell them. I didn't just say it like that. I was like really weird about it. <laughs> Should I call them? But like, that's weird. I, but I feel like I really want to tell them now, but I don't know how. Because of COVID, I won't be able to see them for another couple of months probably. And so I just also sent them a text. I basically basically send them the same text or a very similar text. I said something along the lines of, hello, there's something that I've been wanting to tell you for a very long time. And then I just flat out said, I'm gay. That I've known it for a long time, that I'm really learning to accept this, yada, yada, yada. And then I also said that it was important to me that you know, because I had the feeling that it kind of always stood between us. And then I also said, maybe it's still surprising to you. So that's why I kind of want to give you some space to sort 
sort of digest that information. And then, well, I didn't read it then, but she kind of sort of immediately answered like 10 minutes later. What I did was I put my phone on airplane mode and I just did not look at any of the messages for probably like four hours or so. Yeah, she was really nice about it. She even called me, but obviously my phone was on airplane mode. I also don't know if I would have picked up but they were really sweet about it. The next day I also talked over the phone with one of my sisters and we kind of yeah, talked more in depth about it. And then lastly, I did not really tell my parents. I told my parents over FaceTime. It was really weird. I was actually seeing someone at that time. A day before I told my parents, I had a talk with the guy I was seeing and I told him that I was totally ready to finally tell my parents. I just gotta find a moment and a way to tell them because again, COVID was still a thing. They live far away and I didn't know if I want to do it over the phone. The next day they called me via FaceTime or I called them, I don't know. They in my entire life had never asked me if I was seeing anyone, if I was in love with someone, if I had a crush on someone. Never. And on that day, for some reason they did. That was such a weird moment for me and I kind of was giggling a little and I was like, where does that question come from? You've never asked me that before, ha <laughs> ha. Trying to downplay it and just kind of move on from that topic. And then my father out of nowhere was like, you know, whether it's a girl or a boy, we're fine with it, something like that. And I was so surprised and I was like, that is very nice to hear. And then he kind of repeated the same thing again, just using different words. And then I guess at some point I said, if I were to see anyone, if I were to be in love with someone, it would be a guy. Then they were just like, okay. It was really weird. He was very nice about it. I never felt like I wanted to tell him until I realized I'm independent. I really needed that safety for myself. If I were to tell him and things don't go the way we all want it to go. <laughs> I'll still be fine. Technically, feelings aside, I don't need them. That sounds really harsh, but that's what I told myself and that really helped me. So while we were FaceTiming and after I've basically come out, he was like, I know that I've said some things in the past and I know I'm old, he said something along the lines, but my feelings and thoughts can still change and they have changed. I love you and all that kind of stuff. That was really nice to hear. And ever since then, he never really stopped asking me whether or not I'm seeing guys <laughs> after that. And also the reason why I said it on YouTube now was I honestly don't care who knows anymore. <laughs> Since then, I don't think I've come out to another person. I know that for many queer people, we will always have to come out at some point, And that is a struggle that I think we'll always have to face, whether it's a new job or new friends or new coworkers, new sports team, other people. I just didn't want to give the energy of a conversation. If you know, you know, if you want to ask me, then I'm gonna say it. So that was basically my coming out. I really want to emphasize that I did not want to discourage anyone to come out to their parents by saying that I needed the comfort of knowing that I'd be fine without them. I don't know if that's the healthiest thought, but that's what really helped me. I don't want to discourage you in a way that if you're still dependent on your parents that you can't come out to them, but I understand your fear, but I also know that you will find the right moment. And I hope that you'll be able to assess the situation and I hope you will find security and most importantly, love and understanding. And I wish you all the strength that you need for that because it's hard, it's exhausting, but it's also a really rewarding. So that was my experience. I don't know how it will continue, what my experience will be like from this point forward, because obviously it is a big step to also say it publicly, I guess. And your comments also made me feel safe. So I want to thank you so much for that. With that being said, my food is waiting. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Y entonces nos vemos la próxima vez. Y bye!